Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, chemistry PhD, skincare nerd, and fan of gadgets. I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about microcurrent devices. You've probably seen these on social media, they're these little electronic devices, handheld, that have two metal balls on them. Foreo have launched a couple of microcurrent devices, the Bear and the Bear Mini. They've partnered with me to do a video on how microcurrent works. I'm going to talk about the science behind how microcurrent works, how to use the device, how it feels on your skin, and what results I've gotten. I've been using it every night for three and a half weeks on just this side of my face, so I'm feeling pretty asymmetric right now. If you like nerding out about the science behind beauty products, click the like, the subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. So firstly, what is microcurrent? Microcurrent is basically a really weak flow of electricity. Generally, it's so weak that you won't be able to feel it or you'll barely be able to feel it. There are a couple of types of microcurrent device on the market. I've talked about the iontophoresis devices before. This is where the current goes from the device through your face and then down your body and back along your arm to complete the circuit. This type of device is mostly for pushing skincare into your skin. The microcurrent devices I'm talking about today have both of the electrodes on your face, and so it completes the circuit through a very short portion of your skin. These devices have currents in the 10 to 500 microamp range, so for reference, one milliamp or 1000 microamps is how much you need to be able to feel it. That's the detection threshold. With 10 milliamps or 10,000 microamps, that will give you a painful electric shock. So how does microcurrent work? This is actually a pretty complicated question. There are a lot of benefits that microcurrent devices claim to have. These ones are the most common ones. It tightens and smooths your skin. It tones, contours, and lifts your face. You get more defined cheekbones and jawline. It boosts collagen and elastin. It reduces fine lines and wrinkles, boosts circulation, increases cellular activity, and decreases puffiness. The biggest problem is that there aren't many direct studies on humans using these microcurrent devices that you get on the market to firstly back up the claims, but also to give us a better idea of how they actually work. So let's talk about the background behind what microcurrent could potentially do so we can understand what to realistically expect and demystify some of the jargon behind these microcurrent devices. A lot of things in your body run on electricity, and what electricity really is, is a flow of charged particles. In a metal wire, you have lots of negatively charged electrons, and these can move along to create an electric current. In your body, you don't have a lot of free electrons, but you do have a lot of charged ions, and these can move along and create an electric current. You might have heard of electrolytes and sports drinks. Those contain a lot of the ions that your body uses for electricity. Obviously, since our bodies aren't zapping around everywhere, interfering with our electronics, bioelectricity is at a pretty low level. It's in the microamp level, and that's what's in microcurrent. So how does microcurrent work? The most obvious thing that microcurrent devices do is increase the size of your muscles. This effect is pretty much immediate, and if you keep on using it, the effect becomes longer lasting. And so that's why you might have heard that microcurrent devices are like a workout for your face. Your face muscles getting buff and swole explains a lot of the effects that people see from using microcurrent devices. As you get older, your muscles start to shrink, and that's what contributes to the saggy look, the loss of plumpness, and the loose skin that we associate with older faces. With microcurrent, your muscles get bigger, and so you end up with a younger look. Because the muscle's bigger, it stretches out the skin, and so that ticks off our tightened skin and reduces fine lines and wrinkles. Because the muscle is firmer and bigger, it tones, contours, and lifts your face, plus you get more defined cheekbones and jawline. But why exactly does microcurrent make your muscles get bigger, and how long-lasting should we expect this effect to be? This is where it gets sort of murky and the science gets a bit vague. One possible explanation is that the microcurrent is strength training your muscles, like you're exercising them. Your body uses electricity for a lot of things, and the most obvious one is sending signals through your nerves. It's electrical impulses from your nerves that make your muscles contract, and that's how your body moves. When you exercise a muscle, you put it under strain, and this strain signals to the body through a combination of tension, microscopic damage, and metabolic stress that it needs to produce more protein, more muscle, to deal with this extra work. But it takes about a week between exercise for your muscles to start actually growing, but the effect of microcurrent is pretty immediate. 
So this immediate effect is something that happens in strength training as well. It's often called a pump, and this is when your muscles get temporarily super, super swole right after you work out because it's getting swollen up from extra water and extra blood. This also increases tension, and this can signal again to the body that it needs to produce more muscle. Normally when it comes to muscle growth with electrical stimulation though, it's most effective when the muscle actually contracts properly. This is the basis of EMS or electrical muscle stimulation, which are those electric shock machines that you might have seen on some late night infomercial. And microcurrent isn't like that, your muscle shouldn't be visibly contracting. So it doesn't seem like this would completely explain how microcurrent works. The other common explanation for how microcurrent could potentially work is by increasing ATP production. You might have heard that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, that's because it produces ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is one of the main chemical sources of energy in your body. Mitochondria make ATP from nutrients that you get from food, and ATP is used to fuel lots of biological processes in your body, so things like production of protein, moving ions around, and muscle contractions. One of the things that tends to happen as you get older is that your mitochondria function less effectively, and so you produce less ATP, and this also happens if you use your muscles less. Now, the production of ATP requires a flow of iron, so an electric current, and that's where our microcurrent comes in. And so it turns out that supplying a small current from the outside, so 10 to 1000 microamps for two hours on rat skin, could actually increase ATP production by up to 500%. This is the origin of the claim that microcurrent devices can recharge your cells or provide cellular energy. The production of proteins is affected as well. Electrical differences across membranes affects how amino acids are moved around. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So in the same study, currents between 100 and 750 microamps increase the transport of amino acids into cells. And so both of these effects can contribute to protein production and muscle growth. Interestingly, in this study, when they used 1000 microamps or 1 milliamp, which you might remember is the smallest amount that you can feel, there was actually decreased protein synthesis, and so more isn't actually better when it comes to electricity. The flow of ions can also change how water moves around inside your muscle, and so that could explain the immediate plumping effect. So the problem is that there isn't much evidence that what happens in these samples of rat skin also happens on your face, even though it's quite plausible. And there's some evidence from animal and human studies that microcurrents can increase muscle growth. So it's probably a combination of the strength training effects and the ATP production effects, and probably some other things as well, that lead to these muscle increased benefits of microcurrent. Now with the other claims, the fact that you're massaging your face with these devices could explain some of the other things like boosting circulation and decreasing puffiness. With the collagen and elastin increase effects, the theory is that since you have more ATP, and ATP is used for everything including collagen and elastin production, then having more of it around will lead to increases in collagen and elastin. So is microcurrent worth it? All in all, microcurrent has a really dramatic immediate effect, and potentially some longer term anti-aging benefits as well. But those longer term effects aren't really well tested, and so there's no guarantee that they'll actually happen. But I think there are still some really big things going for microcurrent. The biggest advantage is that it targets stuff that you can't actually reach with skincare products. To deal with changes in your face based on muscles, you'd normally need to go to Botox, fillers, and surgery. So when we're looking at the cost and the time investment, we shouldn't be comparing microcurrent devices to skincare products, we should be comparing them to Botox, fillers, and surgery. And when we make that comparison, microcurrent isn't actually that expensive. There's also a small time investment and minimal side effects. At the very least, there's a short-term lifted appearance that only takes about two or three minutes to make, and that lasts for a decent amount of time, so half a day or full day. That's enough to make a difference to your appearance that would be really hard to achieve otherwise. And so if you compare that to putting on makeup daily, then it's not a huge time investment. The potential long-term effects would be a really great bonus, but I think even if you only believe in the immediate effects, it can be worth it, especially if your face is starting to droop a bit, and of course if you'll actually end up using the device. The really good thing is that you can quickly see what the effects will be like and whether or not you like them. So after the first time you use it, you'll get a good preview of what to expect. And so it's not like a lot of skincare products where you have to wait for weeks or months to see if that investment is actually worth it.
One other popular non-invasive way of getting bigger face muscles is facial yoga. This is where you do a whole bunch of face exercises to like Schwarzenegger up your face. And I think microcurrent has a few advantages over this. First, it's less time consuming. You're only meant to use microcurrent devices for less than five minutes a day, whereas facial exercises you're meant to do for 30 minutes or so. There's also the fact that you often can't purposely exercise the muscles that you want to exercise. We tend to get trained into unconscious patterns of what muscles we like to use, and it's really hard to untrain that. If you've ever been to a physiotherapist, you know that a lot of it is desperately trying to clench muscles that you haven't been clenching right your whole life. If you do the facial exercises correctly, then you should be targeting the right muscles and not over-exercising the ones that are already really swole. But with microcurrent, it's a lot easier just to shove the device on there and target the correct muscle. Facial exercises also make you contort your face a lot, and unfortunately, repetitive facial movements is how we etch a wrinkle into our skin. That's why a lot of wrinkles are called expression lines, so this is things like crow's feet from smiling, marionette lines, and smoker's lines from pursing lips. It's a bit like how you end up with the most wrinkles on a leather wallet in the places that you bend the most. So facial exercises could be deepening your wrinkles while it's plumping up your face. With microcurrent, your face doesn't actually move and so that's not an issue. The downside with microcurrent is that you actually have to go and buy a device and it's a bit harder to use it while you're driving. So onto at-home devices. There are quite a few on the market and obviously they're a bit weaker than the in-clinic versions and so it's recommended that you use these close to every day. This is the Fro Bear and this is the Fro Bear Mini. They are both pretty small and portable. The Bear is a bit larger and so that's meant for all over face treatment whereas the Mini is smaller. It's meant for more targeted treatment like around your lips. Both of these have spherical electrodes and a silicone body and so you can actually wash these with soap and water. As well as the microcurrent, both of these have Ferreo's T-Sonic pulsations, which you might already know from Luna and UFO. These are meant to massage your face and help your products absorb better. You can adjust the intensity of the microcurrent, so this has five levels, this has three, and you can turn the T-Sonic pulsations on and off. The Bear has a special safety feature, which is the anti-shock system. This scans your skin resistance 100 times per second, and it adjusts the current to suit it in 0.002 seconds. So this guarantees a shock-free treatment, which is good if you're a bit scared of microcurrent devices. It doesn't make it any less powerful though. The Bear is actually more powerful than a lot of other microcurrent devices on the market. It operates at a higher frequency with 50 pulses per second. I've been using the Bear on just the right side of my face every night for the last three weeks, and I'm actually really happy I'm making this video now because I can finally even my face up again. To me, the results are pretty dramatic, but I think that's because I know my face and I can feel my face. I think to everyone else it's pretty subtle. So firstly when I smile it feels a lot tighter on my right side so it's a little bit like how after you've exercised for a while and your muscles have gotten toned you feel like they're a lot more firmer and more in control. When I poke my cheeks the right side also feels a bit firmer. If I tilt my head forwards the nasolabial fold here is also a bit less deep. I also tried to use this headband to apply equal pressure on both sides but I think the problem is it's never quite in exactly the right spot, and so it's really hard to see the comparison. So I thought I'd use the bear on my left side, which hasn't had a microcurrent treatment for a few months, and then I'll talk through how to use it, how it feels, and then we can see if we can see a difference. So you want to start with a clean, dry face so that the current isn't interrupted when it flows through the device and through your skin. When it's flowing correctly, then you shouldn't be able to feel much on your face. Maybe it'll feel a little bit firmer, but that's about it. Now, electricity likes to take the path of least resistance, and so that means through the more watery areas of your face, like the deeper skin tissues and the muscle. But the dead skin on the surface of your face is quite dry, and so you want to wet that, and that's why you need to use a gel. Most microcurrent brands have their own gels, so Foreo has Serum Serum Serum, which is a really nice hyaluronic acid serum. You can also use aloe vera gel or ultrasound gel. The problem I found with every gel I've tried is that if you put it all over your face at the start, then it dries out by the time you get to other parts of your face. And if it does dry out, then it doesn't conduct properly and it can start giving this little prickly feeling. So I find it easiest to apply the gel to one area only and treat it and then move on to the next spot. The prickling feeling isn't really painful, it's a bit uncomfortable, it feels a bit like being snapped with a tiny tiny rubber band. 
It tends to happen when you don't have enough gel or if you're moving over like a hair which is interfering with how well that electrode makes contact with your skin. You need to download the Froria app to activate the devices and then you can either follow the routine in the app or you can just adjust it yourself with the button. Right now there's only one routine in the app but there are more coming. I'd recommend using the routine in the app the first couple of times and the bear will adjust the intensities for you automatically but it's honestly pretty easy to use and so I usually just use it with the button. I usually watch another video on YouTube while I do it and I keep an eye on the timestamp so I can keep track of how long I've been using it. This does also turn off automatically after three minutes. I start with applying the gel and then you turn on the bear with by just pressing the button. So the number of, um, that buzzing noise is the T-Sonic pulsations. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And so you double click it really fast. The lights here tell you how intense the microcurrent is. So right now it is going at three, even though it's not making any noise. If you want to adjust the intensity, you just press the button quickly once and it will increase. It will cycle through all five levels. So you're meant to lightly press the spheres onto your face and both of them should be touching and you just glide it up. So I can't actually feel anything, even though I am on the second intensity and this half of my face has never, well, hasn't really had microcurrent for like months. So when the two spheres are touching your face, you can actually see the middle light turn off to show that you're doing it properly. And so if that light stays on, it means it, the current's not running. So to turn it off, you just hold down the button for a few seconds. So you glide it upwards wherever you're using it on your face, avoid the eye area and the middle of your neck, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. One thing I really appreciate about these Foreo devices is that you don't have to recharge them a lot, so I've been using the Bear on a single charge for the whole three and a bit weeks now. It says you can use it for 90 uses per charge, and charging it takes 90 minutes. When you do charge it, it's really nice and simple as well. You just plug it into a USB cable there. There's no awkward bulky cradle or anything. So smiling already feels a bit tighter. I can feel the muscles here um, activating more than before. It turns out it's stupidly hard to smile the exact same amount at the exact same angle for comparison. And I only did three minutes on a lower setting, but hopefully you can see some differences. The cheek is a bit more defined, the jawline is sharper and more symmetrical. It's a bit hard to tell, but I was having trouble smiling evenly before because the two sides felt so different. But after doing my left side as well, it feels a lot more natural. I don't think my mouth is really symmetrical at the best of times, but comparing me talking before and after, you can see how it's evened out. Now I'm really awkward about how I've been walking around for weeks super lopsided instead of regular lopsided. So that's microcurrent. Have you tried it? What did you think? Do you have any tips for getting the best results out of your microcurrent device? Leave them in the comments. As always, I hope you liked this video. If you did, you can click the like and the subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my blog, Lab Muffin Beauty Science, for more on the science behind beauty products. Thanks to Ferrero for sponsoring this probably unexpectedly deep dive into microcurrent devices, and I will see you next time to nerd out more.